Hi, this is Casey with Septic Solutions. Today we're going to discuss with you how to rebuild a diaphragm style air pump. In particular, our High Blow HP 80 model. Uh, this is a process that's very simple. Any homeowner can do it. No power tools necessary. All you need is the diaphragm repair kit from us here at Septic Solutions and you can get your septic system up and running again. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you can notice, I have it uh, zoomed all the way in so you can see as best as possible what I'm actually doing to this pump. Um, we're going to go kind of fast just because of time constraints, so bear with us here. I've already removed, there are four screws around the bottom of this casing here that you will need to take off, and this top will just slide right off of here. That is the first step. Uh, this piece here, it looks like a filter. A lot of people think it is. All it is, the purpose of it is a sound absorber. Um, it's supposed to absorb some of the noise from the vibration of the pump itself. And then you get into this actual pump. And you can see they're pretty simple. There's just this diaphragm uh, and head on both ends with the tube connected to it. And uh, a lot of you may see the reason why your pump's not running in the first place is there is a what's called a safety screw, but it's a black plastic screw that uh, goes in up here that holds the contacts together that powers the pump. Uh, that screw is designed to break whenever the diaphragms go out so that the pump does not hurt itself any further after those diaphragms have failed. So that would be why your pump doesn't come on at all until you replace that screw it won't come on or touch those contacts together. First thing you're going to do is there's these, these are called L-tubes here on the side. You'll take the uh, clamps off and just pull these tubes off. They'll slide right off of the uh, heads they're called, these pieces here behind the diaphragms. They come right off and then we'll just get right into it. You're going to take these four screws off of the end. And already you can tell that the diaphragm here on this end is ruptured. You can see the diaphragm will just peel right off. It is, however, attached in the middle. So I'll have to take that bolt off before we get it. Uh, these four screws that you took out, you'll want to keep because uh, you will have to reuse those. This screw here is a 7 millimeter nut. Uh, it isn't, it looks, it's not, it is metric, it looks like it's not, but it is. Um, so you will need that uh, 7 millimeter nut to remove that. And then this will just slide right off. And then you can see one rusher diaphragm gone. We're going to go ahead and turn it and do the same thing here on the other side. Pop that head off. These four screws again, you're going to want to save all of these. Because you will reuse them. And uh, one thing. We do sell the diaphragms only, which is just this piece, but we always recommend you buy the whole kit because there are air valves. You can see one here and the other one's reversed and it's in here that go bad that are in this piece. So buy the whole kit. Uh, it's worth the extra money to buy a kit that has this back piece with it. And that's what we're going to install here today. Again, the seven millimeter nut, you can push that rod over to this side if you have to to get it easier easily off. You got the seven millimeter nut off, another busted diaphragm off. And so the old parts are now taken off. Uh, you can pull this rod out, you'll want to look at it. This is what we call a magnetic rod block that's attached to the diaphragms. It's the only part that moves. It vibrates back and forth here in the pump itself. So um, you want to check to make sure that it's not cracked or broken in any way because if it is and you put any diaphragms in it, the diaphragms will just rupture again. Also, it's highly magnetic, so make sure you don't have like uh, anything that a magnet's going to hurt near it. 
We'll go ahead and slide that back in, and now it's time to put on the new parts. Now that we have all the uh, old parts taken off, we're going to go ahead and install the new diaphragm kit. Uh, the diaphragm goes on only one way. Um, there's slots that it lines up and slots that connect it to the actual rod block that's in the middle. And you'll go ahead and put these new screws on that you get with the kit, this nut. Uh, the beveled side is going to go out so that you cannot... It's made so it can't uh, come back off the other way. Okay, now that that side is on, you'll go ahead and put on the other side, push that over. Um, this is the only little bit tough part. When you get this diaphragm on there, um, you kind of have to hold one side or otherwise that rod is just going to pull it off again. But you can go ahead and get that nut started here. Yeah, I'll show you. This tightens on. Most of the stuff we recommend you hand tighten anyway because you don't want to overdo it with the screw gun. The new diaphragms are now on there. So now you just have to put on this head, it's called. And it will only go on one way as well. And this is where you reuse those four screws that you had before. All four of them on each side. So you want to make sure you keep these. I can't stress that enough because they do not come in the kit. They are not part of the kit. So you absolutely have to keep these. And really this is just putting it back together the same way it came apart. There isn't a whole lot to it as you can see. And the parts, you know, will only go on one way. You can't get them on wrong, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say here. And again, we're going through this kind of quick. Uh, I apologize for that, but there is a time constraint on these videos. Can't go over 10 minutes, so that is why I've seen it progress as fast as it is. Okay, now that those are on and tightened down, you can put the these L-tubes, attach those back on. Just kind of twist the bottom of them back around. Put the clamp on. Same thing over here on this side. Clamp on. Go ahead and put this original piece, the sound absorber, back on. This part's kind of tight. Sometimes you have to struggle with it, but it will go on there. Okay, and the last thing you have to do is install this safety screw. Uh, I've already put this one in, but basically the screw will just slide through. You'll line up the, the holes, slide it through, and tighten the nut on this other side. And this part should be ready to go. Go ahead and put the top on, tighten down the screws. Okay, we got the top on now and the four screws back in place. The last thing that comes with the kit is the air filter, which is right under this lid. Um, we recommend that you have to replace the air filter once a year. You need to clean it every six months. Uh, it just sits right in that top there and the top will screw right on. Okay, now that we have all of the components back together, uh, the last thing we have to do is plug it in, make sure it runs. www.septicsolutions.com or give us a call to place your order at 1-877-925-5132.
Thank you for watching.